everybody and welcome back to another special episode of the Startup Junkies podcast. I'm Harrison Kitson. I'm here with my co-stars Annie Shu and Claudia Mercado. How is everybody? Doing well. I'm great, Harrison. Today we have a guest, a student from the University of Arkansas, Jenna Kimkis. She is also the winner of our student expo, which happened back in November during Global Entrepreneurship Week. What is Global Entrepreneurship Week exactly? Global Entrepreneurship Week is a week dedicated to educating people in our community about entrepreneurship. During that week, I was in charge of hosting a student expo that showcased all the projects that students partake at the University of Arkansas. I felt very passionate about this project because I am a student. And while at school, I see all the amazing things that my peers do. So I wanted to take all of their projects and put them in a room and give them a chance to win an iPad. And well, Jenna was the winner of that student expo. Jenna, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your project? Yeah, so as she mentioned, I'm Jenna. I'm a senior biomedical engineering student. I've been an intern with the Office of Entrepreneurship for a year, and that's actually where this whole project kind of started. I actually, exactly a year from Global Entrepreneurship Week, I participated in a healthcare hackathon. Ooh, cool. Out of a whim, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but I had a mentee that did it. So I was like, well, she was trying it. I suppose I should try it as her mentor. And out of that weekend, I kind of discovered this little passion for innovating and finding these problems. And it was that weekend that the Star Harness, which is what helped me win the iPad, which I'm incredibly thankful for, by the way. <laughs> All of my notes are on it this semester. Yay, okay, we're glad. <laughs> my favorite thing. That's kind of where this project started. It was one weekend working with a health professional and her technician, understanding what was going wrong and then creating a solution. And it's just grown for a year until we ended up at the Entrepreneurship Week. Yeah. So could you tell us a little bit more about the issue that your harness solves and who the harness is meant for? Yeah. So I came up with a Pavlik harness, Okay. which for people who are unfamiliar, it's for hip dysplasia. So when babies are born, they sometimes have this developmental defect where their hip socket isn't quite fully developed around the head of a femur. Mm -hmm. So the goal is you put them in this harness for mm -hmm. six plus weeks, depending on the severity and it really forces that hip socket to form around the femur head. So overall, a simple concept that can prevent life-altering surgeries that are going in and reconstructing that pelvis. So yeah. the problem is that the harness was developed 100 years ago and no one thought to update it. And so we have these problems where we're in the 21st century. Yeah. Things like it should be machine washable or yeah. adjustments that are down to millimeters that the doctors are making and parents just want their baby out of it because they're wearing it for 23 hours a day. So we wanted to make something that was comfortable, that was user-friendly, and that would really help with the parent compliance with the brace. And you know what I really liked about your pitch is that you had a lot of emotion and that you sympathized with the parents. I feel like that really put like all eyes on you. Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely something like pretty important when you're thinking about entrepreneurship and you're thinking about who your uh, your product or service is meant to target. And I think that's something you did very, very well. What was it specifically that kind of sparked this journey into helping babies in, in, in the way that you are? Yeah, was that a specific, like the hackathon, did they give you a specific problem or did you get to choose your problem? How did that work? I wish I could say it was some long-founded personal story, yeah. um, but it's not. I was presented with three problems. To be honest, I put the public harness, I think, at two or three out of the three. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my first choice. I was really interested in this cardiovascular product. But that's one of those examples of sometimes things just happen for the right reasons. Yeah. And so I randomly got put on this team, and I quickly realized... Once I figured out what hip dysplasia was, <laughs> how big of a problem it is. And I started to hear friends, family, neighbors. As soon as I started talking about it, they all went, wait, I had that experience. I know oh. what it feels like to be in that situation. How, how common is hip dysplasia? Do you know? It's 
fairly common in the sense that you'll meet people that have it, but in terms of pediatric disorders, not super common. Okay. Do you know any numbers on that or no? I did <laughs> in November for my pitch. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> totally okay. Can you um, talk to us a little bit about how the research looked at that and how you kind of put that entire project together? Oh, in the prototype. <laughs> the prototype is quite funny. Um, and the research was a lot of just time on my laptop, a lot of Googling. A lot of it went into what exists for the patents. It was reaching out to parents on Facebook. Hey, what did you experience? What worked? What didn't? I'm now in countless Pavlik Harness Facebook groups. I never thought I'd be in. (laughs) But that's research nowadays. That's how you can connect with people that really use the product. And then from all of this Googling, speaking with the technician and the physician that used it, we kind of started to come up with some mediocre ideas, which were kind of pushed along by the OEI staff. Like, hey, is that really innovative? Did you really think of a new way to approach this problem? And before we knew it, and a few Hobby Lobby runs later, Mm -hmm. we developed a very, very rudimentary prototype. Very cool. And my favorite part was trying the prototype on Baby Marigold, who is the technician's little less than one-year-old daughter. So we put it on an actual baby, and I will never forget that day where she just stared at us like we were crazy. (laughs) Sounds like an agreeable baby. She was. I'm very thankful. So I have a question. So you said that you guys already have a patent for this, or is it in the process? We have a provisional patent. So we're working with that up through the summer, which gives us the ability to talk about it and a year to kind of decide, is this really feasible? Can we prove it's a product? And then we'll move on from there. What is a, sorry, I have no idea, a provisional patent? What is that specifically? Like what? Yeah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it, how is it different than like, a patent. Or, I don't know. I just thought there was just one thing and it was a patent. I did too. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned so much through this process and continue to learn. So we worked with the University of Arkansas and they've really done a lot of the legwork on it because mm-hmm. I would be lost when it comes to patenting. Mm-hmm. But we worked with tech ventures at the university and they kind of vetted our idea and made sure the university was okay with backing it mm-hmm. and taking a part in it. And the first step is the provisional patent which says, okay, for one year, we'll protect your idea. We think it might be something. Within that one year timeframe, we have to then go and prove, hey, is this valid? Mm -hmm. Does it meet someone's needs? Could we actually move it to market? And then it'll be reassessed and they can either say, well, you had a year, sorry, or hey, this is amazing, let's move forward and proceed with the patent that everyone thinks of. So this is me not know anything about patents. Who decides if it's actually something worth like getting a real patent on? For our case, it was the university. Okay. Um, that tech ventures group is an amazing group that does this full time. Okay. So they look, they work with professors, with students, anyone that's developed something, they create their own research report on how unique your product is. Mm. And then they get with a team and whoever is relevant to whatever you've designed, they decide, hey, the university wants to back this. We're moving forward with a provisional patent. Oh my gosh, and does really it cost cool. any money to get a patent? Not for me. Because uh, of the school? Because of the school. Okay. Awesome. What the university pays, it's way beyond my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, lucky you. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, You're good. Very no, thankful. That's the reason why I wanted to have a student expo is because the students – like you that are making a difference that are impacting the world, like seeing that the U of A is like supporting you in this and getting that paying for that patent is amazing. And I mean, they're doing that for free for you. So you're taking advantage of the resources that you have at the U of A. And that's what I wanted to showcase to the public and to other employers. I'm like, this is what's happening at the U of A. Like our students are making a change. And also to me, it just amazes me that somebody my age has already almost gotten a patent. So congrats. Very, very sick. What Thank are you. your next steps for the for the next year besides just trying to get that patented? Obviously, you've got to balance it with your school life. How does that kind of look as well? Oh, yes. I was going to ask you that. It's a tough major you're in. It's a bit crazy, to be honest. I am in a tough major with homework that 
keeps me up at night way later than I'd like to admit. And I'm also active in ROTC. Wow. I'm the president of some on-campus groups. Oh my gosh. Mm. And I work four jobs. Oh, goodness. So lots and You're lots joking. of coffee, probably. Yeah, oh lots gosh. of coffee. Lots of coffee. Lots of tea. Celsius fan? I prefer the powdered Celsius. What? That's weird. Okay, <laughs> but it's so much cheaper. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. You got to save money. Yeah. After all four that's, jobs, I'm yes. still barely, barely affording oh, everything. Girl. Oh, no. But it's it's definitely walking a tightrope, trying to balance it all. I'm very grateful for OEI that they kind of help supplement that time. A lot of innovators, they're doing it for free, just using what they can to get by. And I've had OEI to help, and they pay me to work on it and continue. So they're working on kind of the, I call it the big girl steps yeah. of, hey, who can we contact to prototype this? And I can keep working with students and focusing on my classes while we kind of progress to see where we can go next. So how did you, you said you got involved through OEI because you started interning for them. So how did you find out about OEI and that opportunity? And how has entrepreneurship changed your life through OEI specifically? So the healthcare hackathon really started it because I didn't know OEI existed. I didn't know we had an office of entrepreneurship, let alone that students use it all the time, that it's such a good resource. It was Laura who emailed me and said, hey, we really liked what you did in November. Would you be interested in coming and working with us? Mm. And I'm incredibly grateful because that started this whole new project for me. And it's become a really big passion and something I'd like to carry forward. My goal is medical school. Still mm. want to be a doctor. This did throw a little bit of a bump in the road where I was like, wait, wait a second, maybe. I should just be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, were you planning on going to med school before you started college? Yes. Okay. So that's always the goal. Yep. It's always been the goal. But this was a second where I was like, this this innovation side is really cool. Yeah. What if I did research? And then thankfully, I stuck with it long enough. I realized the dreams don't have to be separate. I was yes. going to ask, why not yeah. both? Yeah. yeah. Mm. The physicians that we're partnering with are doing both. They're heads of hospitals or just clinics with families. They're real people, but they're still working with us and participating in the innovation. Yeah, and then you get the customer exposure too with the people who actually need it, which is a very cool, very good experience. Where do you think, you seem like a very driven and determined person. You've got a lot going on for someone your age, which is amazing. <laughs> I've only just started getting stuff going on and I'm 21. <laughs> um, Wait, we never asked you your specific age. I assume 21 or 22. 22. 22. 22. Okay. 22. Where do you feel as though that drive comes from to be changing the world in the kind of way that you are? Yes. And can I add on to that? Because um, I won't, because I, I study computer science. So I want to know if you've had any like mental setbacks with, you know, people not taking you seriously because you're a girl or maybe you're just feeling discouraged, maybe imposter syndrome. I, I want to know those things, too. So imposter syndrome is a very real thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll come back to that in a second. But the drive, I think, really comes from my start as a gymnast. So I did gymnastics Ooh. for 11 years. I grew up with the lifestyle during the school year, starting from first grade, I was in the gym 25 hours a week training. Wow. And then over the summer, I was there 35 hours a week. It was a full-time job, but oh gosh. that's the only thing I knew. Yeah. I've only known this, I call it organized chaos lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's something I've realized I really love and is really important to me. Yeah. And so as I transitioned out of gymnastics, I kind of found this passion for medicine and then what does that look like? And I keep finding more opportunities. And I'm really big on why say no. Like, what's the worst that will happen if you try? Yeah. So yeah. I've had enough positive experiences. It's helped kind of positive feedback with that drive and that passion. But I would say it all started back when I was a kid. And you say you keep finding those opportunities. It kind of seems like you're creating those opportunities more so than anything, yeah. really. Maybe this is where the imposter syndrome kicks in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, 
more, I'm thankful for more than I ever thought I would be, especially at the university coming in. I'm from out of state. So I was just kind of like, well, we'll see what happens. Ooh, where'd you grow up? Nebraska. Nebraska. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Awesome. What brought you here? I have some extended family in the area and I kind of was exposed to the university, realized they had an engineering program I was interested in. The biggest thing was Army ROTC. Mm-hmm. I met the leadership there and ultimately that's what pays for my school. So yeah. it was, um, that was really important for me. What's um, what's Nebraska like as somebody that hasn't really ventured too far out of the South? How much do you know about Nebraska? Snow. Absolutely nothing. Huskers. That about summarizes. That about summarizes Nebraska. Okay. Uh, Nebraska volleyball. (laughs) That is the one sport we're really good at. Yes, yes. We are, I think of Nebraska somewhat similar to Arkansas. We're kind Mm. of the state that everyone blows off. No one knows about us. (laughs) I kind of like it that way because it's kept this really (laughs) nice little culture where it's very, very welcoming Everyone's really nice. It's more or less one of the safer places. And I was able to really do anything because my mom wasn't scared, you know, something bad would happen. And I got to see everyone in the mall wear red on a game day because it's the one thing, Husker sports, that unites everyone. If you gave that exact description, I would have thought you were talking about Arkansas, to be honest. Red, (laughs) very friendly, very welcoming, can do anything. Yep. When you first came here, did you think calling the hogs was weird? I did not, but I was told by my grandma that I should not bring her anything with a pig on it because she would not do that woo pig thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I imagine it'd be pretty weird for outsiders to look in and be like, wow, that, that what is going on? Yeah, it was a little strange, <laughs> but I think being with the student body looked a little bit different because it was COVID, yeah. so everyone was six feet away. Oh, but yeah. still being in that environment of in the stadium – you just can't help but call the hogs. How did you find, and I know this brings up a lot of trauma for a lot of people when you bring up COVID, but as somebody that is so active and so present in the community and wants to do all those things, how did that kind of affect your daily life? It was interesting. I was very lucky that I found a roommate that I absolutely love. She was a random roommate. We've yeah. lived together four years. Because I could not imagine being stuck in our tiny little dorm room where if we lay on our beds, we can hold hands across the little common space. If I had not liked her, I think I would have lost my mind Mm because we were together all day, every day. Yeah. Everything was online. But I almost appreciated that and realized I learned to do well in an online environment. And it gave me the opportunity to try a lot of things. Because the university was making an effort, how can we continue to connect with individuals? And I didn't have to commute. I didn't have to walk 20 minutes up the hill to go to a class to walk 20 minutes back down the hill for something <laughs> yeah, else. Oh, awesome. the hills are real. Yes, they are. You don't live here, the hills are real. Although during COVID, to be fair, the 20 second walk to my living room to do work felt like a lot of effort <laughs> during that period of time, at least. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I do want to ask you, Jenna, what did you think about the student expo? It was student led by me and it was my first time. So I would like any advice on how to make it better and how do you think that Startup Junkie can connect more to the students on campus? That's a great question. So to start with the student expo, I thought it was fantastic. I was really nervous going into it because I didn't feel like I belonged to be there especially when I saw some of the names where I was like, I, I know her, she's a doc student and I think her <laughs> research is absolutely amazing. What am I doing at this expo? But the fact that I still felt comfortable enough to apply, I think says volumes that it was an opportunity that was open to everyone. I loved hearing from the wide variety of disciplines that were there and from graduate students to undergrads. It was a really cool experience where I got to meet other students and learn some of the other opportunities. I was lucky with OEI. That kind of helped me. I really enjoyed hearing how the other students found their path to entrepreneurship and the different avenues they took. And when it comes to meeting more students and telling them about it, that's a tricky one because I brushed it off. I hear the word entrepreneurship and I'm, I'm too young. I can't do that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And I still feel that way sometimes because it's this really scary word. And you hear these people and everything they've given up for it. 
Yeah. And also, I think sometimes when people hear entrepreneurship, it maybe implies unemployed or unstable. Um, sorry, I interrupted you. Keep going. No, that's <laughs> yeah. exactly right. I didn't realize that it could be something I explore safely mm -hmm. at the university and that I didn't have to have some big idea. I hear about some of the OEI events and I feel like I should have some some idea that I really want to start a business, that I want to develop something, but that wasn't me. And that disconnect came from, I'm interested in medicine. What can I do as an undergrad starting a business with medicine? And now I've realized you don't have to start a business to be an entrepreneur, but that's where my mind was at. And I guess also to do some of the amazing things that you're doing, you don't have to be a med school graduate either, which is no. kind of crazy. And, amazing. And you want to know the thing is, so going back to the student expo, I really liked how you said you liked having a variety of undergrad and graduate students, because when I was sending out the application, I said to all students, and when I had grad students apply, I was a little concerned. I was telling Victoria, I was like, what if their projects are like far more advanced? I'm like, wouldn't that be an unfair advantage to the undergrad students? And the answer we came up with is that entrepreneurship is different in everybody's eyes. And I feel like the reason you won is because your pitch was amazing. Like you really catered towards this, those people, if that makes sense. And I'm a part of the off the student advisory board for the Office of Entrepreneurship. And we're always trying to tell people like entrepreneurship doesn't mean you just have to start a business. Entrepreneurship means innovation, creativity, being different. Anybody can do it. And it really does scare a lot of people away. So I'm really glad that you participated in the Student Expo. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that it has to be a leap of faith. You quit your job and give up everything to pursue entrepreneurship and that's not always necessarily true as in your case and to kind of end on firstly we'd like to say thank you for coming in we've really appreciated learning from you and i'm sure our audience has as well yes. but if you could teach your younger self one thing give your younger self one piece of advice go back talk to them back to the future kind of situation what would you tell your younger self that's a great question i think it would be two things one to little me that thought I was going to be a collegiate gymnast and that was the whole world. Just encourage an open mind. And even to my older self, having an open mind about everything around you is life changing. The minute we have a closed mind about what entrepreneurship means or thinking a healthcare hackathon was computer coding because that's exactly <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of when I think of that too. Exactly. And so that closed mindset, I think, could have stopped me from a lot of things. And I'd want to really encourage myself, take those opportunities, try it. There's nothing wrong with failing. I think that's something a lot of people struggle with, a lot of people that want to be perfect. They're high achieving. It's scary to fail but it's okay to fail. And I feel like I've learned more through my failures coming here than I have through my success. Well, you wouldn't have had a prototype if you hadn't have failed the first four or five times that <laughs> exactly. you attempted it, really. <laughs> that is exactly right. And I think we have a lot of more failures ahead of us before we get to the final product, but I'm excited to see what that path looks like. Very, very cool. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, Thank of course. You. It was wonderful, Jenna. Ecosystem builders, entrepreneurs, chambers of commerce, mayors. If you're interested in taking your economic future into your own hands, we've got a book that can help you. Creating Startup Junkies, Building Sustainable Venture Ecosystems in Unexpected Places is the guide. It's a little bit inspiration. It's a little bit toolkit. What it will allow you to do is take your economic future into your own hands and build a sustainable small business innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem in your backyard. If you'd like to hear more, check out creatingstartupjunkies.com. The Startup Junkie podcast reaches over 100 countries and has had over 100,000 downloads. If you're interested in reaching some of the most motivated and engaged innovators and entrepreneurs on a worldwide basis, give us a shout.